Welcome to Foundations of Christian Thought. This is our first lecture together, and let me assure you I have prayed for you as well as myself as we go through this course and look at uh, this material. The uh, Introduction to Christian Thought, which is the purpose of this course, uh, does necessitate some foundation. And so we'll be looking at some introductory ideas. We'll not be going in necessarily to the extent or the full study of all that we'll be looking at when we mention different religions or when we mention different philosophies. There are courses that are offered uh, of which you can take those more in depth uh, at CBU. Uh, but this one's just an introductory course. And so uh, let's get started as we deal with the worldview. What is a worldview? Well, Ronald Nash. Uh, says that a worldview is a set of beliefs about the most important issues in life. A worldview, then, is a conceptual scheme by which we consciously or unconsciously place or fit everything we believe and by which we interpret and judge reality. In other words, a worldview is what directs and drives uh, the way we look at the world as well as the way we respond to the world. Everyone has a worldview. Everyone may not be aware of their worldview, but everyone has a worldview in regards to um, the way that they live, the way that they respond, who they are. And so it's this fundamental perspective that shapes the way that we live, both internally and externally. And I hope that as we work our way through this course, you'll have a better uh, conscious conception of your own personal worldview and develop it to be a Christian worldview in line with what the Bible teaches us um, according to Christian doctrine that we are going to be studying. Uh, Ronald Nash was a longtime seminary professor and uh, as, uh, as he has come out this is a this is a good definition. Uh, James Sire also tells us that a worldview is a commitment, a fundamental orientation of heart that can be expressed as a story or is a set of presuppositions, assumptions, which may be true, partially true, or entirely false, that we hold consciously or subconsciously, consistently or inconsistently about the basic constitution of reality. And that provides the foundation on which we live and move and have our being. If that last phrase sounds familiar to you, you know, the Bible tells us that that's where we are in relationship to God. As the Apostle Paul expressed in the book of Acts, it is through him that we live and move and have our being. Now, we'll recognize that not everyone in the world um, has a view of God that's consistent with Scripture, and not everyone in the world will recognize that there is a God per se. And so this idea, as Sire kind of expounds on the concept of a worldview, um, does allow us to make that connection to, as Christians, uh, who we are, what we believe, and how we live in this world. There's some important questions that a worldview needs to answer. In other words, what would be foundational to a worldview? Well, Origins would be foundational to a worldview. Um, where did we come from? Uh, where did the created world around us uh, come from? How does it exist? Um, how do we exist within it? And um, how do we, when we observe the world around us, how do we give answer to that which seems so devastating? Now, from a scriptural standpoint, we know that as a result of sin, and uh, the way sin has impacted God's creation. Um, but those are all questions that, uh, again, even if people aren't asking them consciously, it's going to fall in line with what our worldview is and direct not only our thoughts, but how we make sense out of the world around us. And, of course, we want to give a rational answer to worldview. And so we go to Scripture as our source, and from that, we develop this worldview that is the perspective we not only approach the world with, but how we live out our Christianity in the world in which we live. And so, worldview is important. 
the questions that worldviews answer, or the questions that a worldview will answer, all of these, uh, hopefully by the time we get done with this course, will have sensible and rational explanations. And uh, so we will develop these thoughts as we go along through this course. And that's another reason why we're looking at core Christian doctrines through Michael Horton's book, so that we can understand what Christianity has developed uh, throughout the community of Christianity being the church and uh, what we can base our beliefs and our actions and our statements upon. Let me just make a point here about worldview. Um, worldview is tied in with how you were raised. Worldview, um, that doesn't mean it can't change, but it's going to be impacted by the way that you were raised. Um, worldview is usually communal. World, a person's worldview usually ties them in with loosely with a group, but oftentimes very specifically with a set group. And um, so that's where we come up with categories in the religious world or categories in the secular world um, is because of similar or corresponding worldviews. So worldviews truly do affect each one of us. We live by one and uh, we interact with others accordingly. What are some key issues in worldviews? Well, that's kind of what we were just talking about. It's how worldviews relate to the real world. How do worldviews relate to the world? Do they, do they touch base with reality as it's perceived? Can they answer real world questions? about death. Well, we know the Bible explains death as being a result of sin. Uh, so for us as Christians, we can answer questions like that. When we look around the world and we see where is this thing headed? How is this all going to play out? What is the end goal here? Well, as Christians, again, we're looking for a consummation, um, a completion that Christ is going to bring. And um, as a result, those who are his will spend eternity with him. So it's not just a meaningless existence in the midst of what can be so difficult, but there also is a, is a promised ending, a promised reward, a promised life after this life uh, for those who are uh, believers in Jesus Christ. So how a worldview relates to the real world also is one of those questions that needs to be answered from someone's worldview. You know, nihilism is basically a, a philosophy that talks about nothing. In fact, uh, nihilo is nothing in the Latin. And so nihilism is basically nothingism. And it's a philosophy that um, most predominantly would be attributed to uh, somebody like uh, Nietzsche. And Basically, it's a nothingism. There would be no hope. I see no hope in the fact that everything is just matter, and when matter comes to an end, all is said and done, and there's nothing there. So from that end point of a worldview with that philosophy, what would be the reason for my existence today? And again, that issue of existence, we can as Christians relate to as Christians, as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, we're to propagate Christianity. We're to propagate the gospel centered on who God is and what God has done for us in Christ. We not only have a hope, but we can share that hope with other people. So that has to do with worldviews and how they relate to the real world in which we live. And, of course, with any worldview, there can be misconceptions and presuppositions. Um, misconceptions could be a worldview that's arrived at uh, from a maybe a misunderstanding or as I mentioned earlier maybe an environment in which you were raised that as a result turns out to um, not be uh, legitimate. It just happens to be a, a, a situation that you were raised in and um, and that can be important. Somebody who's raised in an abusive situation may not realize if from their earliest memory through their current state of being they've known nothing else and so for them there would be a, 
a misconception of the world around them and they would need to be taught they would need to learn that um, no that's 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 not proper that's not correct um, even even somebody who didn't take a biblical worldview could look at a situation like that and say no your conception of the world around you is based on how you were mistreated um, therefore some of the conclusions you've come to are not correct someone who uh, perhaps was not raised um, in a situation that had a good experience with an earthly father oftentimes that relates to difficulties in regards to our conception with God as Heavenly Father and so misconceptions can come and can influence our worldview there are also presuppositions presuppositions are those um, assumptions that we take for reality not because we can prove them empirically um, but because they fit in with the frame of reference that our worldview would come from so in regards to the Bible or in regards to Christianity that would have to do with God creating that God was God God was altogether different than his creation uh, but he chose he out of his free will decided to create and so he created the world and the universe and the environment um, of, of all the planets and the stars and how incredible all of that is. He created all of that and um, as a result he then created us as human beings and put us in the position to where um, you know we are part of that creation, we are a creature in that creation and so from Scripture and that being clearly taught in Scripture that God is creator and we are creation we use that perspective then to humble ourselves before him to take him at his word as he's given it to us and to use his word then through that presupposition of him as creator and us as the created and by what he's revealed to us we use what he's revealed to us and we make that um, as a basis for who we are and what we believe so presuppositions uh, very well play into um, our our development and our understanding and our explanation of what our worldview is and that in particular goes for those of us who are Christians those of us who would rely on scripture as it relates to um, our worldview there are also conflicts in worldviews there are theoretical as well as functional worldviews in other words what we say we believe and what we do may be different. Um, there are conflicting worldviews. Um, the, the theory and the practice may not match. And so what we want to do from a Christian worldview is to be able to, in function or in reality of the life we live day by day, be able to take the theoretical from Scripture and put it in a way that we can speak to and live accordingly and then relate that to um, the world that's around us um, and as a result there will be a conflict in worldviews um, not everyone's going to take the presupposition of scripture um, that we would take not everyone's going to take the presupposition of God being who he is and so we have to understand there's going to be this conflict of worldviews and that should even greater still cause us to come to this place to where we can line up what we say we believe and what we do so that we would live a consistent life in line with um, what we say we believe and so it's important that's an important issue especially for those of us who are going to base who we are upon what we say as Christians and how that plays out and how we live that out in the world around us. Um, why is worldview thinking important? Well, truth matters. And again, coming from Scripture, our foundational document, or I should say documents, that we as Christians use to not only support what we do, but to systematize how we think um, we look at scripture and scripture is clear as it records the words of Jesus Christ where Jesus Christ himself said 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. Truth matters. Truth matters, and it should matter especially for those of us as Christians because we're basing our worldview upon God come in the flesh as Jesus Christ and his claim of truth. And so from his claim of being ultimate truth, of being living truth, of being God in truth, um, we, should, we should be those who pursue truth. We should be those who seek the truth that God's word makes clear. And so truth does matter. Um, where you're going to run into issues uh, in regards to truth are people who are relativists. People who say, well, that may be true for you, but it's not true for me. Well, even in the simplest English language uh, definition of the word truth, you have conflict right there. Um, truth in and of itself can't be different in different places at different times to different people, or else it wouldn't be truth. And so uh, truth does matter, and the world in which we live seems to be, and especially our society here in the West, and particularly here in the United States, is getting more and more pluralistic, more and more relativistic, uh, more and more not as concerned with the truth and moving away from the importance of truth. And so um, I would challenge you to take very seriously this idea that especially as it relates to worldview, truth matters. And we as Christians, we want our worldview to be based on the truth of God's word simply because of that claim that Jesus Christ made in regards to truth, that he is the embodiment of truth. Also, uh, we must understand in regards to worldview thinking that ideas have consequences. Ideas have consequences. Um, most recently in the news, um, you've probably heard of or you're probably aware of, of um, undercover videos that have been um, displayed um, in regards to uh, the operations and, and other aspects of the organization Planned Parenthood. Please understand, I'm not trying to make a political statement, but when you watch those videos, when you see that type of action and activity taking place in our world around us, that may be one of the most recent and glaring examples in our culture of ideas having consequences. For me personally, for me personally, I am very pro-life. I believe life begins at conception. I, be, I believe God is the giver of life. I believe, as Jesus Christ said, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and our life is fully realized in Jesus Christ as being the life and the light of all men, as John's gospel tells us. But there are obviously those who have a completely different viewpoint. They're coming at this world in which we live and their view of a human being and some of their basic assumptions and presuppositions in regards to human life um, that are different than those that I would take. And so we must understand when, when a conflict of a worldview in regards to life and a conflict, conflict in a worldview in regards to a, a very minimal and even harmful view of life come into conflict, that's where we need to best be able to continue to understand not only does truth matter, but how do we live that truth and how do we articulate that truth and how do we impact that world around us and make sense of the world around us in regards to uh, that truth. And so ideas, please understand, ideas have consequences. They will eventually play themselves out in one form or another. And so uh, and when it comes to our worldview thinking, um, that's, that's an important aspect that we need to understand and um, regard very highly in regard, in, in, as it relates to truth, as it relates to our worldview, why we say what we say, why we believe what we believe, why we do what we do. And then wrong worldviews um, can't make sense of this world. Um, there's uh, existentialism that, that, that basically is a philosophy that says um, meaning is created by our very 
um, existence. And, and as this thought process began, began to come predominant, it was self who set the determining factors. Now, again, if we contrast that, if we compare that with what the Bible says, um, if, if self is just um, where we're drawing our existence from, then certainly all of our existence, as well as all of our views of existence, are going to be as varied as the number of selves or the number of beings uh, that exist. And so part of, and we've already talked about this, part of our existence in this worldview in regards to Christianity, we can explain not only origins that we are created in a special way, um, as God's creation, we are created by a God who is altogether different and, and of his free will um, even allowed this existence in our life to take place. But he also gave life value because he, as the supreme and ultimate creator, created us and, and as scripture says, created us in his own image. Um, and then as a result of sin and, and the fall of creation, um, he had planned even before the foundations of the world to make this way possible for those that are his to once again know him in a way that he intended from the very beginning and even before creation. So from a Christian worldview, someone may not accept that but believe that, but we can put it in a, in a rational realm of of uh, thought and of speech in a way that can make sense of this world and all the craziness uh, that's going on. Whereas someone who would limit their existence to just what they can think or someone who was a naturalist and says that, that uh, what exists is just the world around us and it's only matter and matter is all there is. Um, that is really, in my opinion, a very hopeless existence in a very hopeless worldview and um, so again we see that contrast but in regards to that contrast that's why it's so important that our thinking towards a Christian worldview um, is not only that which directs our lives helps helps us live in the midst of this world and all the all that's going on within it but also allows us to give answers of our understanding in regards to issues of existence and life and what happens after this life and and how all that's going on currently in this world around us um, can be explained uh, or at least tied into sin and the downfall of humanity and so worldview thinking is important and being able to articulate it with reason is uh, is crucial especially for those of us as christians and the claims that we make and then finally, um, I like the way Riken points it out. I like the way Horton, especially throughout his entire book, sets forth um, the world and all of creation and all that God has done in kind of a story format. And um, here we see this idea of the Christian worldview as a story, a story that we are a part of at this time and in this place, but a story that began and a story that will come to an end, but it's a story whose author is God, and as God, as we've mentioned already, who's altogether different than us, created us, brought us into existence, and uh, not only brought us into existence, but gave our lives meaning and purpose as we live. You know, in the Genesis account of creation, God basically gives stewardship of this earth to those of us who are human beings. And so God not only created, made us his creature, but also gave us aspects of how we're to interact with one another, as well as with the created order in which we exist. Um, it's interesting that in the Ten Commandments, uh, we're told not to kill. So we see the importance of life, and, and that's in the aspect of murder. But in this story, as we relate to one another in this story, um, the view that we're to take in regards to one another. So we see God as the author, um, creation as the storyboard in which he's playing out. Um, 
this uh, this drama as it unfolds we see the fall the fall being um, the Bible revealing to us that because of um, man's disobedience Adam and Eve's disobedience that that sin came into the world and through the seed of Adam so that would be every human being subsequent to him that through the seed of Adam sin uh, came to each one of us by nature and so as a result we are fallen and in that fallen state though God is the author and God is the creator has not left he, he has not left us to our own but rather has intervened in that fallen state to redeem us through his son Jesus Christ and in that redemption allows us then access into a relationship with him now as he intended from the beginning but not only a relationship now but also the opportunity to share that redemption with other people that's that's where we're involved in evangelism and missions is the the idea of letting other people know uh, what God has made known to us our worldview our worldview will drive our evangelism and will drive our missions it'll be a natural outcome of our understanding of God and who he is and what he's done for us and so we are called by him to to share and to take that work and, and as Jesus told his disciples to make disciples of all nations and it's interesting that that all nations aspect would also play into our view of others not only others like ourselves but literally others from around the world and then finally that new creation we have in Christ but ultimately that consummation that there there will be an end that um, this fallen world um, will be made new um, just as we in Christ are made to be new creatures there will be a new creation and in that new creation then we will be at that place that God intended from the beginning so that we can live in relationship with him so we can live with he as our God and we as his people so that we can live as it were in a way that God would desire and that we can respond um, as he would uh, he would want us to respond in relationship to him and so these are just some real basic introductory thoughts to the Christian worldview and uh, its importance and as a result of its importance why we will study it together I look forward to our time together and I trust that God will use uh, the material from this course to be an encouragement to you if you have a walk with Christ uh, in your personal life and that if not that this would be an opportunity that God would use to draw you unto himself so that you would come to know and not only know him personally but as a result of knowing him personally have that worldview in which we as Christians should have based upon the truth of his word so let me encourage you with your reading with your uh, beginning to work on your creed and um, I trust God's blessings upon you